this by air or hearing this by audio, we want to welcome you yeah. and invite you to prepare yourselves to receive. Amen. God has something for us. Amen. He yes, always he says he's always prepared a table for us and he sets it before us. Are we able to partake? I tell you what, when Patricia fixed me something to eat, yeah. <laughs> I'm always ready to partake. I don't care who fixed. <laughs> I'm always ready to partake of our fellowships. Amen. But I need to do my part. He's got something for you. We need to come in here with a set mind, prayed up, Amen. and ready to receive what God has for us. Amen. Yes. Got to change our attitude. We've talked about this before. Change our attitude to say, Lord, I'm here to hear what you have to say. What is the plan of the day? And on a daily basis, he says, we fight a good fight of faith. So you know what? If I'm going to fight a good fight of faith, i got to know whose I am and who's with me. He's with me and he's backing me all the time. Just like King David, little David, when he went and he went against Goliath, you know, he knew who he was in Christ. Yes. Amen. Nobody's talking about God until David showed up. And then he saw the giant. You know, when you will start to walk out the door and you see all these giants facing you, you better know who your God is and who you are in Christ. Amen. And he, we have the authority. So we take authority and we set the scene wherever we go. Amen. God is with us. God is, is always with us. He says he never leaves us nor forsake us. So happy Sunday morning to you. We invite you to come and partake and receive. Amen. Welcome to New Beginnings Church of the Big Ben here in Marfa, Texas. We welcome you. This is a church you can call home where we honor God, love families, serve one another, and pursue excellence. Amen. Amen. So praise God. Get yourselves on go and let's go on with the word of God. Amen. He wants to talk to us today about keeping your joy. <laughs> keeping your joy. God has given us these things, and we're going to keep them. Amen. He's given us this, uh, this Holy Spirit. He's given us the, the fruit of the Spirit, and joy is one of them. Amen. So I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. What do I need to do to receive these things? Well, first of all, He wants you to prepare yourself, be encouraged, be changed, and be convicted, because He's not finished with you. I don't know if He was here last week, but uh, we gave these handouts. If you don't have one, make sure you get yourself one. Put this somewhere where you can see it on a daily basis. It says, I am blessed, I am chosen, I'm adopted, I'm accepted, I'm yeah. redeemed, and I'm forgiven. Amen. Amen. So whatever the world is saying, whatever your friends are saying, whatever your family is saying, whoever, whatever is saying, the enemy attacks the mind. The battlefield is the mind. So we must renew our mind with the word of God. And start confessing what the word of God Amen. says. I am blessed, chosen, accepted, adopted, redeemed, and forgiven. And you know what? When you start confessing these things, you're going to walk the walk and talk the talk. Amen? Amen. And you're going to take authority. I, you ain't no junk. So quit calling yourself nobody. Quit calling yourself a piece of trash or junk or no good. You know, you don't accept those things anymore. God has great plans for you, and none of them include defeat. That's right. Amen? <laughs> he put you here just to, for you to sit. I've got something to do. We've got something to do. We're the body of Christ, and we're to do something. Amen? Yeah. So who, if he's ahead and we're the body, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to get busy for God. Yeah. Amen? We've got a mission yeah. to do. Before we get too excited, grab your swords, grab your Bibles. Mm -hmm. This is this is mine. So say it like a man in church. This, this is my Bible. I have what it says I am. I have what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I'll be taught the word of God and boldly confess. My mind is alert and my spirit is receptive. And I'll never be the same. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to talk to yourself. Yes. What do you talk to yourself? The word of God. People see you talking. Say, are you going crazy? I say, yeah, I'm going crazy for God because I'm confessing the word of God. <laughs> Amen. That's better than... Well, we used to be out in the world and saying, confessing the wrong things mm -hmm. and putting yourself down and calling yourself less than what you are. Mm -hmm. You know, remember this, and I'm getting way ahead, but see yourself the way he sees you. Mm -hmm. Amen? See yourself the way he sees you. But you got to have a relationship to know how he sees you. He sees you a winner. He sees you a champion. He sees you an overcomer. Mm -hmm. You can do all these things through Christ. Amen? Yes. Woo, hallelujah. Praise so I'm excited, church. Keeping your joy. Amen. Hallelujah. There we go. There's our first text right there. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. So we're talking about pastor here. You know, I always feed my body. So my body is real strong and full. <laughs> and I always 
keep myself nourished, you know, hydrated, hydrated, <laughs> always drinking, full, cool. cool. okay? But we seem to neglect our spirit man. Mm -hmm. Our spirit man is always on empty, amen? Our spiritual batteries are always low, mm -hmm. amen? And what do we fight? We fight a spiritual yes. battle amen. on a daily basis. So we need to keep that spirit man full. Mm -hmm. We need to change our priorities and get our spirit man up to speed. You know, keep him full also. Amen. Amen. So, why is it <laughs> on a daily basis that Christians lose their joy? Mm -hmm. They start off good, you know, when we get born again and we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. We feel on fire for God. And man, we want to go tackle the world. And then all of a sudden, we lose that joy, amen? We lose that joy. And we're going nowhere. <laughs> when we first become Christians, we feel so great. But as time goes on, it seems like there was a leak. You spring a leak. And the joy drains out. <laughs> How can you tell? You look at people's face. <laughs> put a smile on your face. I guarantee you put a smile on your face. People want to know what you're up to. The first thing they think is no good. <laughs> but then... When they open the door for you to say something, you say, because Jesus, because I spent time with my Savior this morning, and he loves me, and he wants me to do for him, amen? amen. And so when they see that joy, they want some of that joy that you have. No wonder I couldn't see it. I had my glasses on. Take them off. <laughs> we got to change our priorities. We got to change our priorities. You know what happened? All of a sudden, Matthew 6, 33 says to yes. seek him first. Seek his kingdom Amen. first. And we get our priorities in order. We get the word in order. We start doing these things. The next thing you know is we just change the priorities all over again. We put the world on top. We put ourselves on top. And we take him off the throne and put ourselves on the throne. Mm. And we invite the world to come in. So we must watch our words and our actions. Feed your spirit the word of God. Renew your mind with the word of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. And crucify the flesh. Remember we're three, five beings. So you got to feed all three. Mm -hmm. Your spirit, man, you got to feed the word of God. Renew your mind with the word of God and crucify your flesh because your flesh wants to dictate. Mm -hmm. And the flesh is going to dominate. If you don't feed the other two, the flesh will dominate every time. Amen. Mm -hmm. So this is something you know that's okay. There's too many Christians who are struggling through life. Born again Christians living a defeated life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, I'm born again Christian, but you're not showing it. You're not walking it, and your actions ain't showing it. Mm -hmm. You are born again, mm -hmm. spirit filled Christians. Amen. On our way to heaven, sadly, instead of joyfully, on our way to heaven, we should be shouting victory in Jesus. Amen. Amen. And, and being joyful and not sad. We should be on our way to heaven joyfully shouting victory on a daily basis. God wants you to enjoy your life. Amen. He wants to bless you and he wants you to enjoy life. A couple of acronyms that I have for you. Joy is Jesus. First of all, Jesus owns you. Amen. Jesus only you. And Jesus over you. And Jesus overwhelming you. You are to enjoy, enjoy your life abundantly. Mm. John 10.10 10 says the enemy comes to what? Steal, kill, destroy. But Jesus says this. And he says, I come that you might have life and life more abundantly. He wants you to enjoy life. But we got to get our priorities in order. And we got to confess the right things. He also wants us to know your enemy. Know who you are in him. And know who's backing you. Amen. This helps. And we must keep that relationship going. We must grow and mature spiritually in the things of God. And we must know the truth because the truth sets us free. Amen. When you know the truth, it sets us free. You so-and-so say something. You know, we got this so-and-so is always coming around and telling us things. And we believe so-and-so before we believe the word of God. So-and-so said this. Really? If you know the word, you know it's not right. So you go to the Word and check the Word. And if it doesn't bounce with the Word, if it doesn't match with the Word, or if it's not what the Word of God says, then you go with the Word of God and let so-and-so go. Amen. And when so-and-so come every time mm -hmm. to say things, you let them know. 
give me scripture. Do you have scripture? They probably don't even know what scripture means. But if they don't have scripture for it, don't receive it. Amen. Yes. It's not for you. Yeah. Uh, John 8, 32 says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Yes. So here's our first slide. Our text, Matthew 8, excuse me, Nehemiah 8, 10 says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. We need this joy. We don't need the sadness. There's plenty of sad things out there, you know. <laughs> we are to bring yeah. the good news to the world, Amen. not sad news. That's right. We're not bring bring them gossips. We bring them the gospel. Mm -hmm. Amen. Go to the next one. <laughs> rejoice in the Lord with always. always. And again, I say rejoice. rejoice. Philippians four four. <laughs> awesome. The New Living Translation or New Living uh, Version says this: Be full of joy. Always, because you belong to the Lord. Again, I say, full of joy, because you belong to the Lord. But you know who you are. You should be full of joy. Yeah, but you don't know the problems. You don't know the cares. You don't know all these things that are coming against me. And what does the Word of God say is about that? It says to cast all your cares on yes. Him. So why are you still yes. carrying on? So why are you still holding on to Him? <laughs> he says, give it to Him. Do you think you can do a better job than God? No. Which to release them and cast. It says cast. Throw it. Yeah. Give it to it. Quit holding on to them. Yeah. Ooh, I like that translation. Mm -hmm. Be full of joy always. Because you belong to the Lord. Again, I say be full of joy. Mm. The King James says rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. rejoice. Next yes. slide, please. Psalm 1611 says this, Thou will show me thy path of life. In thy presence is what? Fullness, Fullness of, joy. of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures for a time. No, forevermore. Forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. God is awesome. Mm -hmm. And keep going. I like this. This is a uh, Followers of Jesus should be joyful, prayerful, and thankful. First Thessalonians, you can mark some of these down. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says to be joyful sometimes. No. When things are good. Uh-uh. No. All it says always. Always. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Lord, but you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what the situation. Look what Jesus went through. Mm. Amen. Can't be no harder than that. 17 says, praying continually, praying without ceasing, always praying, amen, talking with him, talk with him, you know, and 18 says, give thanks in what? All, All circumstances, circumstances. where well, this is no. God's will for you in Christ Jesus, circumstances are always going to be there, your choice is how you're going to receive it, and what you're going to do with it, amen, hopefully you'll cast it on him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Keep going. Hebrews 12, 2. <laughs> Looking unto who? Jesus, Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him and do it the cross. The joy that was set before him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> every day is a joy to have a new day to serve mm -hmm. him. To be glad and yeah. rejoice in it. Amen. The joy that was set before him to go to the cross and be mm -hmm. crucified, be sacrificed. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Despising the shame and that is down at the right hand of the throne of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next one. I put this up here for you as a freebie. <laughs> but the uh, uh, John uh, fourteen six says. There's no way to the Father except through Jesus. He came and gapped the he, 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 he gapped that uh, sin gap. Jesus did. He covered it. Between man and God, there was a separation because of sin. Jesus is the gap. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Joyfully came from heaven and allowed himself to be crucified for us, mm -hmm. to buy us back to the Father in a joyful way. So this is man, Jesus, and God. There's no gap in between that anymore. Mm -hmm. Amen. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, amen, 
Hallelujah. You can joyfully come over on his side, the winning side. Amen. Amen. So praise God. Keep going. The fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such, there is no law. But number two says what? Joy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Oh, I just want to get these slides out of the way. Keep going. <laughs> a joyful heart is what? Good medicine. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 17, 22. Let's go there yes. right quick. Read it out of King James. Amen. This is a different translation. What's the King James says? Proverbs. Go to the book of Proverbs. This is awesome. The word of God is great. Amen. Yes, it is. Praise God. And God is good. You ain't joyful, you'll be joyful when you get all this. <laughs> 22. Mine says, A merry heart doeth what? Good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Ooh, hallelujah. So I'd rather have a cheerful heart. Praise God. Let me read it to you from this translation. It's called the... Uh, let me see. Well, let me read it to you from this translation. It says, A happy, joyful heart is like good medicine. It brings healing to a broken spirit. Depression drains your strength. Mm. Dries, drains your strength. Mm -hmm. Dries up the bones. Amen. So yes. we don't want to allow ourselves to be here. Amen. So praise God. Go to the next one. So joyful is a good medicine for you. It says the joy of the Lord is our strength. strength. So yes. joyful, joy is a good medicine for you. Yes. For God's own what? Love the world that he gave, joyfully gave his begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have joyful, everlasting life. Amen. If you ain't never seen it that way, but it is joyfully, joyfully that he gave. And joyfully Jesus came. And praise God, we can have eternal life with him. Amen. Hallelujah. So the joy of the Lord is our strength. Go ahead. <clears throat> We talked about this at the beginning. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice yes. joyfully and be glad in it. Mm -hmm. Psalms 118.24. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Praise God. Keep going. There we go. Just leave it right there. Most, listen to this, most Christians spend most of their time, not you guys, but a lot of Christians <laughs> spend right. most of their time defeated, beaten, overpowered, overcome, overwhelmed, and crushed. Hmm. Uptight, tense, anxious. Hmm. Upset, sad, troubled. Hmm. Overstressed, burdened, overloaded, overstressed, overstrained. Hmm. Discouraged, cast down, depressed, dejected, disheartened, hopeless. All because their joy and their happiness is based entirely on circumstances. Mm. Maybe you have the wrong job, the wrong career, relationship, friends, or bad habits. Amen. All this comes with you not casting your cares on Him. Amen. And if you see yourself in a lot of these things, it's time to change your priorities. Defeated, uptight, upset, overstressed, and discouraged. Give it to Him. It's not for you to carry. It's for Him. To give it on Him. Also, He says in 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, Give all your worries to Him. Cast all your anxieties on Him because He cares about you. Psalms 55 and 22 says this on the extended Bible. I'm going to think about that a few minutes ago. It says, Give, throw your worries or your burdens, that which He has given not given you to the Lord and he will take care of sustain you and he will never let good uprighteous people or righteous people uh, down or be moved if God is for you who can be against you God wants you to fulfill the plan that he has for you and he has great plans for you just know this because the enemy is going to see to it that he wants to stop you. What is the enemy's mission against you? Steal you, 
kill, destroy. Steal, kill, destroy. Amen? So, we want to know. We identify who our enemy is, and we don't want to give place to the enemy. The Bible says, give no place to the enemy. Amen? So, hallelujah. Don't lose your joy. Cast it on him. Don't allow your joy to go. Of course, that's your choice. Yeah. All these things, distractions, will discourage your spiritual discharge your spiritual batteries. Mm -hmm. We must keep our spiritual batteries charged at all times. Yeah. The Bible says we fight a spiritual battle on yeah. a daily basis. Amen. Whether you know it or not, you fight a spiritual battle on a daily basis. Also tells us that we must fight this good fight of faith daily. Mm -hmm. With him you win, without him you lose. Yes. Very simple. Mm -hmm. Keep those spiritual batteries charged. Stay stirred up. Stay hot for Jesus, not lukewarm. Not that lukewarm part-time Christian mm -hmm. is no match to a full-time devil. Mm -hmm. You've heard that so much. Now we know. We need to keep those spiritual batteries. We need to keep our spirit full at all times. Well-nourished at all times before we even feed ourselves. <laughs> mm -hmm. But we need to keep ourselves too. But we overdo ourselves and starve our spirit man. Mm -hmm. We can't do that. We can't neglect the spirit man because we fight a spiritual battle. The Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. And he will. All he, all he needs to do is just wait. He says the enemy comes and he prowls around seeking who he may devour. Mm -hmm. How does he know who to devour? Mm -hmm. By our words and our actions. Mm -hmm. You mean, if you're not renewing, if you're not feeding your spirit man the word of God, and you're not renewing your mind, and you're not crucifying your flesh, he's going to hear some things come out of you. He's going to hear defeat come out of you. Mm -hmm. He's going to hear some negative things come out of you, and you open the door for him to come in. Mm -hmm. So on a daily basis, constantly, we must feed our spirit man the word. We must renew our mind to the word of God mm -hmm. so we don't give no place yeah. to the enemy. Amen? Amen. We can't blame nobody else. Your spiritual wife, you can't blame nobody else but yourself. Mm -hmm. You got to keep your spiritual walk up and up on a daily basis. Yeah. Amen. And you got to keep this relationship going. You can't give no foothold to the enemy. You know what they say if you give them a ride, he'll mm -hmm. want to drive you. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, no way, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> so, no part time Christians know is that no match to the enemy. Ephesians 6 12 says this in the extended Bible For our fight, our conflict, our struggle is not against people on earth, flesh and blood, but against the rulers and the authorities and the powers or the cosmic powers, rulers of this world of darkness. Yeah. Against the spiritual powers of evil mm -hmm. in the heavenly realms and places. Amen. Jesus says he's already defeated them. All we need to do is fight the good fight of faith. Yes. Keep the word of God. Amen. Grow in him and stay with him. Stay, keep those spiritual batteries charged mm -hmm. up and up. And use the authority he's given us. He's yeah. given us authority. We fight a defeated foe. We fight a defeated devil. Mm -hmm. But we don't show that authority. We don't use that authority mm -hmm. he's given us. If we don't use that, mm -hmm. the enemy is still going to come in. Yeah. He's going to keep coming. So just beware. People get happy and joyful when things are going good. Yeah. When things are going their way. Mm -hmm. When there's lots of money in the bank. Oh. <laughs> Within, when, when it's Friday. Oh, thank God it's Friday. Always, always. Thank God it's Friday. When it's a holiday. When it's vacation time. When it's uh, time off. And when it's party time. People are happy. But you know what? This thing accounts for only a small part of our lives. Yeah. Amen? Only a small part of our lives. We must keep that joy. We must keep ourselves joyful at all times. And give no place to the enemy. Don't allow the circumstances to dictate your joy. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We've already said this. Most people, including Christians, spend most of their time defeated, uptight, upset, overstressed, and discouraged. We must grow and mature spiritually in our relationship with God. Amen. It must grow. When, when it grows, it says the truth will set you free. Yes. We're growing in Him. It's time when you know the truth, 
you'll magnify your God instead of your problems. Mm -hmm. When you don't know your God, you magnify the world. You magnify the problem all the time. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing bigger than your God. That's right. Amen. There's nothing bigger than your God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. We're joyful even when things are not going our way. We're joyful instead of weary. Worn out by the moods. How about Paul and Silas when they were beaten mm. and put in a dungeon? Mm. And they were in a joyful <laughs> praise and worship mood. <laughs> they were praising their God and their God hears them and comes and delivers them. Yes. Amen. I like this too. Again, Paul in prison. You know Paul spent a lot of time in prison. Yes, he is. <laughs> All his life, really. <laughs> Paul in prison. But the prison never got into him. Mm. He fulfilled what God called him to do and wrote two-thirds of the Bible mm -hmm. in prison. Part of his and it, life. He, he was not sad. Mm -hmm. If he would have been sad, he wouldn't have accomplished <coughs> what God told him to do. That's right. If you're going to be sad about what God told you to do, you're not, you're not going to be a happy camper. Mm -hmm. So might as well be joyful at doing what God has called you to do. Amen. Yeah. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You need uh, strength to be joyful about it. <laughs> God's word says that we can live life with joy. Just do it. You know, Nike was not the first one to come up with yeah. Just do it. Yeah. God did. Yeah. says, just do it. I just want you to do it. You can do it. Moses says, but I can't talk. How many times we go before God and tell him mm -hmm. what we can't do. <laughs> and spend our time there, you know. You don't have to tell nobody else. God knows already. Mm -hmm. I can't do this. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. If God puts you here, He wants you to fulfill it. And you can fulfill yes. it because the Bible says you can do all things, all things. through Christ who strengthens Amen. you. Amen. So praise God. praise God. Just a couple of steps I'm going to give you on how to keep in your joy. Amen. Amen. Of course, please, if you don't have, uh, we invite you and we tell you all the time take your Bible and uh, personalize it. Hmm. Mark it, highlight it, underline yes. it, and make it yours. Amen. Amen. And Nehemiah 8.10 is one of them. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Mm -hmm. Joy is the result of knowing who you are and who you are in Him. No matter what circumstances or what's going on around you. Amen. Praise God. First step is this. You be, be led by the, by the Holy Spirit. Keep your joy by allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you in the way we should go. Proverbs 16, 9 says this. People can plan what they want and do, but it is the Lord's guide and the Lord guides and directs our steps. Yeah. The good steps of man are, let me, let me read it to you this way. Psalms 37, 23 in the Amplified. The steps of a good and righteous man are directed and established by the Lord. Uh -huh. And he delights in this way yes. and blesses his path. Yes. The easy to read version goes like this. The Lord shows us how we should live and he is pleased when he sees his people living this way. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So he tells yeah. us, well, God never talks to me. Huh. Well, pick up your Bible once in a while. Open it up. Open and he talks up. to you all the time. Yes, he, he wants will. to talk to you. He wants to spend time with you. Yeah. He says, I, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Uh -huh. He said, I want to come and spend time with you. When you do that, he wants to spend time. He, he's going to visit with you. Mm -hmm. And he's going to talk to you. Amen. When you have a relationship, God's going to talk to you. So many people complain about how poor life is. Mm -hmm. They need to check their own priorities. Mm -hmm. They lost their love for God. They open the door to the enemy. Watch your words and your actions. Get back in relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't let your priorities slip. Mm -hmm. When you let your priorities slip, the enemy comes in. Because of your words and your actions. Mm -hmm. Number two is this. Simplify your life. Don't try to do too much. Yeah. Overcomplicate your life. Yeah. Satan tries to complicate your life. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy your joy. Sometimes uh, we marry our careers, our jobs, our hobbies, our habits, our friends, and our things. These things enemy can use to distract you and pull you away from relationship with God. Amen. From coming and assembling ourselves together. 
keeping us too busy to enjoy all God has given us. Mm -hmm. You know, Mary and Martha is one example. Mary came in immediately to serve God, Jesus. And Martha was too busy mm -hmm. with the things that are going on. So we can't get too busy with, with the things of the world and forget about God. Amen. Enjoy your relationship with God. Enjoy time with family and friends. Take time to laugh and crack a smile. Some of us really need it. <laughs> <laughs> give, you, give me a frown a break once in a while. I don't want to look mean to anybody, you know, so if you see me frowning, <laughs> it's not my intentions to be proud, to be sad, or, or to try to be too much of a macho man, you know what I'm saying? I want people to know the greater one is in me. And I'm gonna smile. Sometimes people, you're gonna bless somebody with a smile. Well, I don't even, you know, God wants us to give of ourselves. Yes. Before we give of our finances. When he tells us to give, most of the time we think about finances. Mm -hmm. He wants us to give of ourselves. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be Christ-like. Mm -hmm. When you're Christ-like, you invite people and draw people. Yeah. <laughs> When you try to push people away is when you frown and you look mad. And uh, that's not that's not that's not a good thing. Simplify your life. Enjoy your family, enjoy your friends. Take time to laugh and crack a smile. We need it. <laughs> Take time to enjoy life. Amen. Yeah. He wants to bless us and he blesses us. But he don't want you to fall in love with the blessings more than fall in love with God. Mm -hmm. Amen. So it's not about the, just the blessings, it's about him. Yes. Number three is this, pray with boldness. Brother Scott over here was telling us about this a few minutes ago, but Hebrews 4, 16 says this in New Living Translation. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. Yes. Then we will receive his mercy and we will have fine grace to help us when we need it most. Amen. Amen. Know the word of God and you can go to the throne of God and just tell him, this the way it is. This is what's happening. Amen. Just be bold. Go to Him. Be bold and confident in God when you pray. Amen. Don't just be double-minded when you're asking for His blessings. Mm. Just ask for what you need boldly and in faith. Without wavering, without hesitating, or without doubt. Mm -hmm. Know that your righteousness is in Him. You know, well, I don't feel righteous. I don't feel like I, I can go before Him. Mm -hmm. Well, then uh, you need to renew yourself because uh, renew your mind and know what the Word of God says because you are the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's got nothing to do with uh, the circumstances or, or your feelings. You need to renew that and know that you can approach Him because of what Jesus has already paid. Amen. Amen. So praise God. Be quick to forgive. Woo. Hallelujah. A lot of us need this. <laughs> <laughs> Joy is restored to your life when you learn how to forgive and forget. And these two verses go together. Psalms 103 talks as this. God told us to forgive. God tells us to forgive our sins. But uh, to put them as far as from the east and from the west. Yeah. And he remembers them no more. Mm -hmm. If God can forgive and forget our sins and forgive, forget them no more. Who are we to hold it against anybody else? Amen. So wherever God sends it to you, wherever God sends through these doors, come here in this church, who are we to say, well, you're not good enough to join this group? We're the body of Christ. And people are trying to come into the body of Christ, and we're saying, no, you're not good enough. And Jesus already paid the price. Yes. Amen. Say welcome. Amen. He does the cleaning, we don't. Amen. Amen. We sow the seed. He yes. waters it. We water it. And he gives the increase. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we try to, listen to this. We try to forgive people, but forgiveness can do its redemptive work because we want to remember what they did to us. We continue to think and talk about them. <laughs> so we can't do that anymore. You know, can you see Jesus just going and spending time with the Father? He says, you see what they're doing to me? <laughs> I don't want to forgive them. So, you know what? Just take me out of here because I don't want to fulfill this mission. These people are hateful. <laughs> These people are mean. Look what they've done to me. You know, before he gave up himself to the, back to the Father, he says, <laughs> He 
said, forgive them. Yes. Amen. And you, if you don't know what they've done to him, I mean, they beat him. But he couldn't even recognize him anymore. Yes. And they still couldn't kill him. Mm -hmm. And they poked him. And they whipped him. All these things they did to him. Humiliated him. Stripped him. And yet, before the Father, he says, well, I complete my mission. That's me. He says, forgive him. So who are we to say? Yeah. Oh, somebody yeah. stuck their tongue out at you and you're going to look at him for, forever. Yeah. That's nothing compared to what Jesus went through. <laughs> oh my God, Lord have mercy. Remember our past offense. Re listen to this. Remembering a past offense reopens the wounds and feeds and feeds anger. Remember in the past reopens the wound and feeds anger. Then anger feeds unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. Why do we need to forgive other people? Because our faith won't work. Unforgiveness blocks our fellowship with God and prevents spiritual growth. We're torturing ourselves when we hold grudges that don't forgive, that don't forget others, excuse me, don't forget others. While we are miserable and upset, the person who hurts you is enjoying his or her life. Mm. Amen? Yeah. Listen to this, you can write this down. Mm. Holding unforgiveness is like taking poison and hoping the enemy dies. Oh boy. <laughs> well, I'm going to take some poison and I hope he dies. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> Holding unforgiveness is like taking poison and hoping your enemy will die. If you have lost your joy just because of unforgiveness, start to forgive people right now. If you got a list a mile long, start forgiving. Ask the Lord to give you the power to forgive these people and then let it go. He has given us, He has, he has forgiven us and forgotten our sins. We should not hold on to unforgiveness against anyone. Mm -hmm. Amen. But you don't know what they've done to me. But look what they've done to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And before the Father, stripped naked and beaten on the cross. And he asked the Father to forgive. Mm -hmm. Forgive him. The same people that welcomed him into Jerusalem as king crucified him. Yeah. Amen. So, so you want to be king. <laughs> they took him and they crowned him with a crown of thorns. Now, I'm not talking about little thorns. I'm talking about the big thorns. And they jammed it right into his head. Number five is this. Obey God. Walking in obedience to God is one of the best ways to have a joyful and blessed life. Psalms 37, 4 says this. Delight, enjoy yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. We need to learn to wait on him and listen to what he is telling us to do. Then, just do it. Amen. Now remember, he says, you can do all things to Christ who strengthens you. Amen. One of his commandments in John 14, uh, 15 says this, if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. Obey my commands. If we really love him, we will let him have his way in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Number six is be yourself. Being satisfied and happy with yourself is a very important key. To enjoy yeah. life. Yes. Hallelujah. Be an original. Be the original God made you to be. Mm -hmm. Be yourself, not a copy. You don't have to be like anyone else. Many right. people think they must become another person. That kind of thinking will steal your joy. Yeah. Don't copy, compete, or compare to any another person's life. Just be who God created you to be. That original. Remember, God has called you, and well, you can just go through your list that we gave you. God has called to you, anointed you, and equipped you. So be that joyful and rejoiceful person. Amen. Amen. God has made every one of you unique. Some of us really need to hear this. God has made you unique. He's made you and gave you gifts and talents and abilities. Nobody else in this world is exactly like you. That means what is best for someone else 
may not be best for you. That's why we don't have to be copying one another. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because God made you just the way you are. And you are unique. He's given you gifts, talents, and abilities. That means what is best for someone else may not be best for you. So be satisfied and joyful with what God has made you to be. Yes. See yourself the way he sees you. A winner, a champion. Beautiful, happy, joyful. Don't let circumstances or the world dictate to you what you should be. Mm -hmm. Or we're not going to do this if you don't do this. No. He made you exactly who he wants you to be. If you try to be like someone else, you will miss the beautiful life God has planned, especially for you. Yeah. God made you for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the last one is this. Let God occupy every area of your life. Mm -hmm. I like this one of my favorite scriptures in the extended Bible. Colossians 3.23 In all the works you are doing, work the best you can do. Do it heartily. And so from your soul, as if God were doing it for and you doing it for God and not other people. Yeah. Remember knowing that you will receive your Lord's reward, which he promised to his people. Amen. Of the inheritance. You are serving the Lord. When you do it unto him, you are doing it unto him and not unto people. Amen. You're serving the Lord Jesus Christ. This means that God wants to be included in our everyday living, not just when we're in church. Mm -hmm. Some people think this, you know, it's not just in church. It's when we leave these four walls and we go on our mission fields, wherever God has you. But you know you're a representative. You're an ambassador for him. Yeah. And then you're his mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. And you're bringing people to him, reconciling people to him. I believe he has anointed us to give, to live ordinary and everyday lives in victory and with joy. Just let go and let God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. When we decide to let go and let God, he'll give us his joy and his yes. peace. Amen. Amen. We start living this way the way he's called us to be. And in closing, Amen. <laughs> remember enjoying the abundant life Jesus died yeah. to give you and based on a decision you've made, mm -hmm. not on your circumstances. That's right. Amen. So praise God. Start celebrating your life. Don't just endure your days. Enjoy your days. Amen. <laughs> Smile. It'll give you Hmm. A face lift and a spirit lift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get with Christian friends and enjoy and cut loose and, and uh, have Amen. fun. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Every morning when you wake up, before you even get out of bed, I yes. encourage you to declare out loud, I am going to enjoy this day. Why? Because this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. We need to remember that on a daily basis. Amen. And with gratitude, just say, thank you, Jesus, mm -hmm. for giving me a new day to serve you. Amen. Yeah. And know that you can do all things through all Christ things. who strengthens you. Amen. Amen. So praise God. Praise God. Ah, I believe that you receive. Amen. Decide to be happy and joyful. Thank you, Lord. Where you are, where God has you. You know where I'm at? I'm exactly where God wants me to be. You are where God wants you to be. So be joyful about it and not sad about it. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Those of you that are watching, those of you that are listening, yes. we pray for you. If you have never made Jesus your Lord and Savior, now is the time. Repent. Lord, I've sinned against you. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Get your life right. Join a church where you can go and learn the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Yes. And start going in the Word of God. Yes. And study to show yourself approved. Get you a Bible and start reading the Word. And things will change in your yes. life. So you can Amen. be joyful and not sad anymore. Amen. So praise yes. God. If you're hurting, I'm praying for all those that are listening and all those that are watching. Yes. And all Thank our church Lord. members here in Jesus' name. By Jesus stripes you're healed. Yes. And the Word Amen. of God says that by Jesus stripes you're healed. Right. So Whatever ails you, whatever sickness is coming against you, yes, we just lift it up to Him. The body of Jesus stripes you heal right now in yes. Jesus' name. Whatever part of your body is aching, 
or whatever is going on, we just call and heal and release the healing powers of Jesus to overtake you right now in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Everybody said, Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I hope. I pray that you receive. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.